All right, what's up, everybody? Uh, thanks for uh, joining us on a uh, another Tuesday night. Um, we're all kind of still hunkering down. I think everybody's in the uh, the same position, and um, it's some um, some very interesting times. That's that's for sure. You know, so uh, first and foremost, hopefully everybody is um, is safe. Their families, everybody, you know, just try to heed the warnings that they're that they're kind of uh, you know telling everybody to stick around the house and try to keep this stuff you know, from spreading even more so that we're, uh, you know, not spreading this crap around and, you know, continuing to get more people sick. So anyway, enough with the PSA. So, uh, yeah, so tonight we're going to be drinking, uh, some, some good barrel strengths, barrel proofs, uh, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, so John was nice enough to, uh, to join me. He's out on the West coast, so he's just kind of wrapping up work. So it's a little early for him, but, uh, he was, uh, he was good enough to agree to do it. So, uh, obviously I think everybody knows, uh, John from blind whiskey reviews, but if you don't, John, take it away. Tell everybody a little bit about you and your channel. Yeah. Hey everybody, John blind whiskey reviews. Like I said, Scott, so we, I'm sure we share a lot of subscribers. So I'm sure a lot of you guys already know me, but yeah, just doing tons of blind reviews on my channel. Uh, you can catch me on Instagram and Twitter blind reviews. I also have an Instagram account mission bottle kill that a lot of people seem to enjoy posting pictures of people killing all kinds of great bottles of whiskey. So definitely go check that out too. But yeah, I'm just looking forward to drinking some, uh, some barrel strength whiskeys here. Yeah. So this, will be, ugly, this, Scott. this will be good. I figured, uh, what, uh, what better to go with, uh, the coronavirus and everything that we're all dealing with than a little high proof, uh, whiskey. So it'll be, uh, it'll be good. I'm really, really looking forward to all of this. So, uh, all right. First, let me say hi to everybody in the, uh, in the chat. We had a few of the, uh, the normal pre-gamers before Trev Wilson. How's it going? Will Henderson, Bourbon Buddies. How's it going? Neil, Matt, ADHD Whiskey. Uh, who else? Wildlife and Whiskey. How's it going, buddy? Uh, who else we have here? Vanessa Kitty. Andrew Spurrell. How's it going? Uh, Warner Lackner. Chad Holly. How's it going, guys? Wisco Whiskey Review. So if you guys... Uh, if you haven't checked out his channel, go check out Wisco uh, Whiskey Reviews, uh, another local um, guy here for me. Um, he's doing some uh, some good stuff. He's got one video out, but go go check him out and, uh, you know, see how he's doing. So Christopher David, how's it going? Or Eric Gilbert, Kirk Bollinger, Jason, the Mash and Drum, how's it going, buddy? All right, so let's kind of fire away. So I'm going to start off first with, I've still got some of the old uh, B517. Um, this is one I've kind of had around a little bit. I've got one other backup bottle, but for me, for whatever reason, it's not the easiest thing to always get. So um, I kind of tend to hoard the 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 Elijah Craig barrel proofs a little bit. So, um, but let me let me back up uh, with one other thing. So tonight, a couple of things. So I've still got a few of my like wooden coins. This is going to be kind of just to help out. Uh, a couple of the local like bars and and some of the bartenders in the area. So anybody who does any super chats of, of any kind tonight, all of that money will be um, will be donated directly to um, you know somebody at one of these bars. If you want to buy a coin, you can um, any of that stuff. So really anything that you want to to either donate or ever. I mean, don't feel like you have to. I know there's some some tough times or whatever, but whatever that is, it'll it'll go to. Uh, uh, a local bartender at uh, somewhere around here. So uh, anyway, so with that being said, why don't we get into a few of the uh, few of the whiskeys here? So what are you starting off with, John? So I thought I'd start a little bit on the lighter side. I took a pour of the uh, New Riff single barrel, which they bottle it at Barrel Proof. This one's 112.4 proof. Still, I think only at four years old. So a little bit of a young Barrel Proof whiskey. Okay. Well, and that's the one nice thing with with New Riff. I mean, they're they've kind of killed it, you know, in the last year, year and a half or so. So they've they're really putting out some good stuff. So and yeah, I've really got some of their products. This one is eh. This barrel, I mean, it's, it's a single barrel product, so I imagine there's some variants, but this one doesn't pop super hard for me. Um, mm -hmm. not as much flavors I'd like. Their bottle and bond that I had was fantastic. This one's just a little bit lacking in like like complexity and depth, but it's good. It's just not killer right now. Cool, Matt. Thanks for uh, thanks for the uh, super chat. I appreciate that. Tip for the bartenders. Yeah, I mean it's so important. Thanks, Chad, as well. Five bucks for that. You know, it's it's one of those things where I mean, there's there's so many of these businesses that are are going to be, 
you know, struggling. Some may not come back. And, um, you know, for us here in Wisconsin, um, they've already closed everything down until like April 25th. So, I mean, we're still another month out where there's a lot of people who aren't going to even, you know, have potentially a job when they, when they go back. So whatever you guys, uh, donate, I'll, I'll be giving, um, you know, some money to, to them as well. We've got a couple local, local bars that will, will really appreciate it. So thanks guys. I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, going back to the, to, uh, the Elijah Craig barrel proof, this is the B five one seven. So this was the 2017, uh, whiskey of the year. So, um, 124.2 proof. Um, and then also I forgot to mention anybody who does super chat tonight, I've got a 1983, uh, Evan Williams. This is their 200th anniversary. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but, um, this was a special bottle. Um, and it's a total butterscotch bomb. So, uh, everybody who super chats tonight, will put your name in the, um, in a little drawing random, you know, randomizer or whatever. And then I'll, um, uh, I'll pick somebody, uh, as to the, uh, the winner of that. So, so thanks for, thanks for all that. So, um, so now what about the Elijah Craig barrel proof? You guys get this quite a bit out by you or what? Yeah. I mean, it's pretty, pretty regularly available out by me. You know, the, one of the stores that I frequent quite a bit, it's pretty much always there on the shelves for the most part. I mean, there may be a little bit of lag for a month or two in between batches at times, but for the most part, they usually have a batch or two available and at a reasonable price. I mean, I can still get that whiskey for 60 bucks. So yeah, that's a, I mean, it's, you know, when you say that, I mean, for 60 bucks, Jim, thanks. I appreciate that. I mean, when you say, um, you know, when you say 60 bucks, I mean, it's really, it's really hard to beat that, that value. I mean, it's just for, you know, for what you get. I mean, that's a really hard one to beat. I mean, for 60 bucks, there's probably not a whole lot of better, you know, uh, bourbons out there for, for that kind of price, you know? You know, and I harp on it a lot too, but like, I think there's certain things that provide you value in a bourbon or a whiskey, right? Like age being one of them, proof being one of them, and potentially like maybe some like unique or special ingredients may up the price of, or the cost of the whiskey for that distillery. You know, all these distilleries are putting out non-age stated product at, you know, whatever, a hundred proof or whatever, like these random proof numbers that aren't barrel strength and there's nothing special about them for a hundred dollars. And it's just like, it doesn't, you're not adding up the value. Where's that value coming from? You look at yeah. a product like Elijah Craig barrel proof for $60 it has an age statement and it's at cash strength, which is generally in like the hundred and high hundred and twenties into the hundred and thirties. Yeah. It's a steal and it's great whiskey. Yep. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, it really is when you get into, you know, bourbon and value, you know, there's a couple of good, you know, high proof benchmarks out there that kind of lead the way in terms of value for what, you know, what you're getting. Like I've got, you know, like this one here, the old Ezra seven year, you know, barrel strength. I mean, 40 bucks. I don't know what it is for a lot of people, but I bet it's very close to that, you know? So, you know, any of that is, I mean, it's just, it's another great bourbon. I mean, for a hundred and what is it? 107, 117. Yeah. 117 proof barrel strength. I mean, 40 bucks great value bourbon right there. I mean, it's, it's tough to beat that. You know, like you said before, when you're trying to compare all of these things to, um, craft things and other younger stuff, I mean, it, it does, it makes you really kind of step back and think like, geez, I mean, how in the world are some of these other, you know, craft distilleries even making it with these prices? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess there's just some intrigue for new and different things and, you know, no, everybody's on, they've had the Elijah Craig barrel proof. It's on to the next Next thing, you know, trying mm -hmm. to find that diamond in the rough. Maybe I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it is it's a it's a crazy thing in terms of the uh, the value with that. So how are you? Um, how are you liking the the new riff the the barrel? Yeah, uh, it tastes about the same as I remember. Just a few few average bourbon notes. Nothing really crazy going on. Like I said, I, I've heard a lot of really good things about some of their single barrel store picks. So I'd really like to get one of those and kind of see how it compares. But for me, this one's not not knocking my socks off. I mean, I think I paid fifty dollars, forty five or fifty dollars for it. So it's not like it was insanely overpriced or something. So yeah, that's well, still a pretty good. I mean, in terms of you know value, again, I think if you can get a lot of these these barrel strength, you know, especially single barrel, um, you know, for 45, 50 bucks, 
in in today's day and age, that's become a pretty good value, you know? Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, like you said, there's these benchmarks and it's hard when you compare them to, like for instance, that old Ezra you've got sitting in front of you is the same price. Or I think I paid 50 for this. So the, the old Ezra is cheaper by a significant amount, $10 cheaper. It's higher proof, which I mean, that's not a big deal. It's a few proof points higher, but it has yeah. three extra years on it. And to be honest, it's a much better bourbon than this is tasting right now. So it's really yeah. hard sometimes to justify buying these craft whiskeys. I mean, what yeah. are you going to do? <laughs> it, it, re it really is. I mean, there is like, I mean, you know, we all have those, those handful of ones in the back of your mind all the time that you're comparing things to, you know, not only in the flavor part of it, but monetarily, you know, you're thinking like, well, you know, for you, you can go to the store and get, you know, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof for 60 bucks, which makes buying a lot of these other things very difficult when you know you've got that in your back pocket. Yeah. And really, I mean, if it wasn't for the channel and stuff, I would imagine, you know, at this point, I would have honed my collection into a few key, you know, favorites like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof or Nog Creek Single Barrel, which isn't barrel proof, but, you know, or the Russell Russell's picks or, you know, things like that that I really enjoy. And, leave the rest, leave the rest out. Why bother? But I guess it would be difficult if you did a blind review every day and each review became Elijah Craig barrel proof. Hey, <laughs> my what channel, do we got, what do we got today? Well. It's like groundhog day all over again. <laughs> so like, like Doug says, like prices in upstate, um, you know, range from 55 to hundred bucks for Elijah Craig barrel proof. Now, I mean, again, if you can get it 55 bucks, hundred dollars, I mean, it's still a great bourbon, but, and, that hundred dollars is like a magic number. It seems like, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, all right, let's see who else we, what else we got in here. Um, yeah, I guess what's everybody else drinking right now. So yeah, there's a lot of, a uh, lot of different things. Yeah. I guess it kind of seems like for the most part, that's one thing I, I'll, I guess I'll kind of give, I know people have gone off a little bit on heaven Hill and this will be my, my defense of them. I know people have kind of given them a really, really tough time about them getting rid of the old, you know, uh, white label, you know, six year, and then, you know, adding a seventh year, or whatever onto it or an extra year, making it seven years and, and then jacking the price to 40 bucks. But I would say for the most part, you know, I think they've done a good job with keeping a lot of the prices on things fairly reasonable for the most part. What do you yeah, think? I, I don't disagree. I would say they were kind of dumb when they went and rebranded that product. Why would you do that? If you yeah. want to put out a seven year more premium product and charge a higher price point, it could have been the same exact whiskey. Just call it something different. Like don't, you know, just, just bring that product out, eliminate the six year and bring this other thing out and don't call it heaven Hill bottles and bond, you know, like, yeah. Nobody would have thrown such a fit. Yeah, was, and that's the thing. I, I was substituting that product. Yeah, and I would ag I would agree. It is one of those things where to go from you know let's just say twelve or fifteen bucks, whatever it was before, to to already skyrocket up to forty bucks. Everybody, for the most part, I think knows what it is. Now, here's the thing. I think we all say we know exactly what it is, but I think there's a lot of people out there who had you know not much of an idea, maybe of the six year, maybe. You know, and then now they rebrand it to a seven year and it's 40 bucks. Maybe the masses, you know, aren't a bunch of nerds like we are, you know, and and kind of got all jacked up over it. I don't know. What do you what do you think? Oh, I'm sure you're right. I mean, I'm sure most people weren't even aware of its existence being a Kentucky only release. You know, only us dorks that traded for it and got yeah. people to send us some and you know, that we're the only ones that really knew about it. But, you know that's kind of your, your base, right? When you're these distilleries, like obviously you're, that's not your bread and butter, but your base of people that are presenting this information to people are the dorks like us. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's the thing. I mean, it's a, it's a fair, it's a fair argument. I mean, we all, we all know basically, you know what that is now. Here's what I would say. If, if by them doing that allows for more $60 Elijah Craig barrel proof to be on the shelves and distributed more, I'm, I'm fine with that. I guess that's where I wish um, some of the distilleries would maybe be a little bit more transparent in terms of what they're doing and like why they're kind of doing it. And that's my, that's my thought was maybe to try to generate maybe a little extra revenue somewhere else. I mean, short of just tapping into the market, you know? 
I mean, I can't imagine though that that's supporting them to the point where they are able to maintain their pricing on other stuff. I mean, there's just not enough of it out there. This I don't even think it's had nationwide distribution yet. So yeah. I, I highly doubt that's going to be their their bread and butter when it comes to you know bringing in revenue. But yeah, well, I mean, Heaven Hill's gotten some guff over that. And I mean, I've had my problems with Heaven Hill over the last couple of years too with some of their Henry McKenna stuff and their customer service is abhorrent. So I mean. And there's other issues there, but I won't get on my soapbox right now. Maybe yeah, in a couple yeah. more drinks. It's, I mean, it is. I mean, it's, it's, it's all a fair and valid. It, they're all valid points. I mean, so why, why they're doing it? You know, it, it is what it is. You know, so anyway, but yeah, this, you know, here's the thing. Like as far as you know, going back to this, the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, the batch, the B five one seven. I mean, it's a very, very good, you know, high proof bourbon. You know, is it the best whiskey of 2017, according to Whiskey Advocate? Yes. Is it? I don't know. We all know this is so subjective. You like what you like for whatever reasons, and it is what it is, you know? So that's yeah, the, absolutely. that's where I've always struggled with, like in, in reviews, I've always struggled with putting a, a rating on something because again, it, for me, it's all so subjective, you know? You know, so that's where, that's where I kind of always, that's where I decided early on to not rate it. I know a lot of other guys, including you, Will and everything, but, and what we taste and, and smell, that's all so subjective, you know? No, absolutely. And it's even subjective to yourself, right? Like what you ate that day affects how yeah. your palate is. Like I've definitely done reviews where I've gone back and been like, man, that's, that's, true. that doesn't taste like that. I've had this whiskey. It doesn't taste yeah. like that. And I'll try it again the next day and it's different. You yep. know, yeah. Sometimes I won't put those reviews out. Some of the times I'll just throw it back in the review pile so it comes up on another day. And yeah, because well, I, I want to try to be fair, but I do think to some extent it's kind of important to rate a whiskey in the sense that, like, at least for the people who find, because I mean, I'm sure you have the same thing. Is you find a lot of people that frequent your channel quite a bit that kind of have a palate that's the same as yours. I think yeah. that kind of helps them make decisions. You know, if as long as everybody's got to be abundantly aware of the fact that, like. Yeah, everyone's palate's not the same, and what I think, what I'm tasting, may not be exactly what you taste. Yeah. But people kind of figure out who has similar palates to them and kind of similar mindsets on whiskey, and they they follow those people and they they trust those ratings and make decisions yeah. based on them. So yeah. I think to some extent, it's there is some value in a rating. But. Yeah, and, and that's you know, and I mean, hey, you, you go through the wine section, and and everything is you know, nineties. Everything is like a great a great wine. Yeah, I mean, I don't know like what they all mean or anything, but and I would agree, I would agree the, you know, with you on, on that, as far as trying to match up with people that have a similar profile or, or when they've tasted something that, yeah, this is, this is what I get and, and all of that as well. So, uh, what do we got? So we had, uh, Werner here was sipping on some Eagle rare 10 Christopher David oh, sipping on the Woodford wheat. So this was a little bit of a, that was a little bit of a miss for me. Now, again, I'm not a huge like weeded bourbon fan. So for me, I tend to not, you know, um, go for those. So Jason's sipping on some of the bullet cast strength. I'm sure that will be a uh, review coming uh, in uh, five, four, three, two. No. <laughs> so no, I mean, it's uh, that's one of those ones that I've been kind of interested in um, looking at. So now here's, Here's no, here's no shocker right here. Modern thirst. This is probably Bill sipping on an up, on an upcoming four gate seven year ride due out this summer. So I told him I've really been looking forward to uh, to tasting that one. So they they do a fantastic job with the the four gate stuff. Uh, what else we got? What else is everyone sipping on here? um woodford wheat tastes like bourbon finished in oh yeah so bill says uh that woodford woodford is uh woodford <clears throat> wheat tastes like bourbon finish an apple brandy cast to them so i can see that i mean that's the that's one thing with like the weeded whiskeys they really take on a an interesting uh uh profile that's for sure yeah there's always this weird like twang you get from the wheat that i always notice yeah i'm gonna pour myself a new pour here i'm I need some. Here's what I want to know what you guys out there in the chat think. This is the uh, Little Book Batch 3. Mm. You know, the blend of all the uh, Jim Beam small batch series at cast strength and different ages, of course. 
I never, I haven't fallen in love with this one yet. So I'm curious what you guys think about it. A lot of people seem to rave about this stuff and I just, I think it's good, but I haven't found it mind blowing just Here, yet. Here's, here's one thing. And, and you can tell me if this is what you do and some of the guys in the chat, but my recommendation for all high proof stuff is if you want to open it up, have a little sip and then just set it aside, like just set it there for two weeks, three weeks. If you can hold out, because I mean, almost always for me with a high proof bourbon, whiskey, whatever it may be, it always seems to get better. It just becomes for me, I guess how I try to describe it as more like refined, you know, it just, it's some of the alcohol kind of starts to burn away and you're left with just that flavor that you're really, really looking for, you know? Um, all right. So yeah. So that's <laughs> okay. So I want to make a correction. Apparently I grabbed the wrong bottle of little book. This is definitely not Little Book Batch three. This is Little oh. Book Batch two. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that makes a, that makes a, that makes right a big away. difference in terms of probably why it doesn't totally taste like bourbon. So, this tasted like rye straight away. Yeah. So that's that'll uh, that'll impact your decision on. Uh... Well, hey, at least you actually at least you though. Know. A lot of people didn't like this batch two. I kind of enjoy it. I think it's pretty good. I thought there were, I, I, I thought like originally, like the first one, since it was no benchmark, it was interesting. It was different, had some cool profiles. The second one was, was okay. It was a little bit different. And then the third, I really liked the third one. I don't have it. I only had a sample of it, but really, really enjoyed it. So, yeah, I might have to go uh, grab my bottle of batch three to make up for that. But yeah, this, I like batch two. I think it's interesting. It's good. It's got some nice notes because there's some 40 year old whiskey in it. I'm sure it's not very much, but you can definitely kind of find those notes in there too. Well, Peter White says he loves the LB2 uh, as well. He probably likes it because it's, um, I think it's kind of heavy on the rye part of things, right? Mm -hmm. So I should have looked at the label. Yeah, but yeah, the batch two was a eight year Kentucky straight rye, 40 year Canadian whiskey, and 13 year Canadian rye. Yeah. So, you know, and that's, so sp speaking of rye whiskeys, I think that's what this, um, the very old St. Nick, the cast drink, this is their summer rye. I'll go to that in a, in a minute, but from preservation distillery in, in Bardstown, they're, they're kind of doing some cool things. I think they were able to get a hold of some older, um, some older barrels of, of rye whiskey and, and things like that. So I don't, I don't know a ton about them, but um, I know that she and and her husband were able to get a hold of some some pretty interesting um, uh, barrels uh, a while ago. So, all right. So, what does uh, Peter say? He's got forty year uh, Canadian Club and thirteen year whatever CSV Alberta Rye. I I don't know the abbreviations. I'm assuming that's I'm assuming that's Canadian Club. I think that is a forty year Canadian Club. Which I've seen, I've seen that at Costco. I think that's the one. It's either forty or or fifty years old, and I want to say it's like three hundred bucks or something. Oh yeah, yeah. I've never so, seen that at my Costco. It's so no. funny how the different Costcos vary in what they carry. I know. It, everyone's different. I see people posting pictures, and their their Costco's getting Elijah Craig barrel proof, and it's like forty eight bucks. Like I mean, it's just crazy stuff. I've never seen Elijah Craig in my Costco. No, we don't, we don't really get it. The only thing Elijah Craig that I get is just the regular 94 proof. We'll see that once in a while, but other than that, so. I oh. did just pick up, I don't know if your, does your Costco get a lot of their own like Kirkland brand stuff in? Cause I just grabbed a bottle of the, the 22 year um, Kirkland scotch. That's supposed to be pretty good. And it's 22 years old, 79 bucks. I mean, it's just, where are you going to find a 22 two year old whiskey for that price? Yeah. Yeah, I've always been like a little reluctant and I don't know why. I mean, I don't know if it's just like, you hate to say like snobbery or something, but I'm like, oh, I can't drink it. It says Kirkland. I mean, how good can it be? But I've, <laughs> I've, actually, I've actually heard pretty good things about it as well. So I don't know. I don't know much about what they are, or where this stuff is coming from. But like you said, for 70 bucks for a 22 or 23 year old scotch, that seems like a pretty good deal, you know? Yeah. And uh, I don't know much about I mean, I don't know much about scotch in general, but um they uh they use alexander murray which alexander murray is like a uh you know a company that sources whiskey from all kinds of distilleries in scotland and puts it out in their own bottlings and they're all over the place and they use alexander murray to do their kirkland scotches um really? and i know uh 
Rob from Whiskey in the Six reviewed one or two of them, and he he said they were pretty decent whiskeys, and especially for the price, you can't beat it. So I'm curious to try them. I haven't opened them up yet, though. All right, what do we have here? Uh, Joseph, the preservation released um, on 81 very old St. Nick 17 year cast strength bourbon, steel vatted in 1998, bottled in 2019. Delicious stuff. So I know I I have seen some stuff that they that they did, and it was I mean I've heard like some fantastic things. I haven't haven't had the privilege of of trying that one yet, but. Um, I know they've got some really, really old stuff. So um, they're they're kind of doing some some interesting things there as well. And they're again another kind of smaller. I guess I, I hate to say craft distillery. They are producing some of their own stuff, but I think it's still a little ways out. Um, and I know they've they've got a couple of like little off brands like oh, I forget what the what the name of it was, but anyway. Since we're talking about that, I'm going to go with a cast strength rye. There you so go. You're up to the uh, – now, this was one that – I got this at the distillery. It was a little – it was a little pricey. I think it was, I don't know, 160 or 180 bucks. And I think – and I don't know, maybe, maybe Joseph can tell me if if this one, the, the very old St. Nick, the cast strength summer rye, my guess is that this is probably a Canadian – um rye i don't know if, for sure but um or maybe bill even knows uh from modern thirst you might know exactly what it is but i really i really liked it i mean i when i was at the distillery trying it i i really enjoyed it and decided I'd, I'd pick up a bottle so yeah it's just there's something about there's just something about this one and i cracked it open finally the other day i mean at almost 119 proof 118.9 proof it's um, a really easy drinking rye whiskey. And I've gotten, I've really gotten into rye lately. Um, what about you? Are you a big, are you a big kind of rye guy or cast strength rye? I, it depends on the rye a lot. I have not found myself to generally be a big fan of 100% rye so much. Um, yeah. I found a couple, I mean, there's a few that I like. I find a, a couple of the 100% rye, they just end up being kind of harsh and they lack sweetness and, you know, there's yeah. a few things I think that they don't balance out very well necessarily. But saying that, um, I do like rye. I, I enjoy like the more Kentucky style ryes. I would say myself, like your Pikesvilles, or I I did this one not too long. I'll break this out in a little bit. But like the Michter's Barrel Strength Rye. Oh yeah, really yeah. enjoy that one. Um, or this one. I brought another rye out too. I got a, you know the Peerless. Yep. Which one is that? Is that Peerless the, the Mind Lord? But I think it's very solid young rye. Which uh, which peerless is that? Is that the two or three year? This is the three year. Okay. Thanks, Christopher. I appreciate that. the uh, The bartenders will appreciate it even more. So thanks. We'll uh, we'll get your name in the drawing at the uh, at the end for. Uh, and I'll probably I'll have to somehow figure out to go back and 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 everybody who's done it, any kind of super chat. Um, like I was saying early on, any super chat will get you entered into the. Uh, the drawing or into being able to win a, a sample of the uh, the 200th anniversary uh, Evan Williams. So it is a really nice 1983, really nice uh, uh, older older whiskey. So butterscotch bomb. If you if you like that in in old dusties, then you'll you'll really appreciate appreciate that one. So yeah, I'll get everybody uh, I'll get everybody listed and uh, figure out uh, how we can contact everybody. Let me throw up a um, if anybody wants to, if anybody wants to email me who anybody who's email or anybody who's entered so far, if you want to send an email to me, at least then that way I can contact the, uh, the winner or whatever it may be. So, but we'll, we'll figure out, we'll figure out a way how to, how to get it to you. Most, most everybody's got either, uh, YouTube channels or Instagram or whatever. So we'll, we'll figure out a way to, to get the sample and stuff to you. So. Um, all right. So let me get back to this. Yeah. This one for the, for the cast. Now here's one thing I would say about like rye whiskey for me, um, especially the cast strength stuff or barrel proof, whatever you want to call it. Um, is I'm not a fan of like dill in, in any rye whiskey for the most part, it's just a turn off for me. So once I get that, it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a, um, a turn off. So Jason, thanks. I appreciate that. Thanks buddy. Um, so yeah, that's that's for me. So I don't know, like for 
for, you know, rye whiskeys and stuff. Um, you know, what about you? Is there something about like a rye whiskey that will kind of turn you off? Yeah, like I said, and some of like the hundred percent rise, I'll find them. They, they end up being a little bit dry for me, and they get a little bit like bitey. Yeah, and so sometimes to me that just isn't isn't the profile I'm looking for. I don't love dill and food. Like you won't catch me eating a dill pickle, but yeah. I don't mind a little bit in a whiskey I can tolerate. But yeah, if it's overwhelming, I'm out. What yeah. whiskey? There was a whiskey I tried not too long ago. It was just like a dill bomb, and it was disgusting. Yeah, um, but there's whiskeys that I would say that like like that I really enjoy like high West double rye where I think it has a little bit of dill in it, yeah. but I think it's a fantastically blended rye. It's one of my favorite like budget rye pours. Yeah. And it is, it's a really, it's, it's one of those really good ones that's, um, you know, it, and what I always think about like high West for whatever reason, it's always, it's always interesting. It's, it's unique high West for me, however they're blending or whatever it is that they're doing. Cause I think they're still, I think they're still pulling a little bit of MGP and blending with their own distillate. And there's a unique profile that high West always has to me. Yeah. I think their, their whiskey, I think is only maybe like four or five. I don't know how many years old their stuff is, Yeah, but they're definitely like they've in the last few years started blending their whiskey in with their source distillate to kind of come up with their blends. Cause I think like, I think the double rye is a blend of like two and seven year old whiskey or something. Yeah. I think the seven's MGP and the two year old is their stuff. Yeah. I think you're, I think you're right. Cause the old, the older stuff where I had um, some of the old double rye, it was a blend, I believe of like Barton, uh, which was old stuff. It was like 16 or 17 year old rye blended with like a six or seven year old MGP. So it really gave off an interest, a really interesting uh, profile. So, yeah. but yeah, let me get into the, I know there's just something about this rye whiskey. It's got this effervescence to it. It's very like mapley some like underlying, like um, almost like lemongrass, a little bit of mint that's there. There's no dill on this at all. Um, and Peter would probably be a good one to, to ask this, but is there, is there something with Canadian rise? Now for me, of the ones I've had, they seem to not have, thanks, Will, I appreciate that. Um, they seem to have like almost no dill. It's more spearmint, a minty note than it is um, a, a dill note. And I don't know what it is about the Canadian rise that, that that's what you get, but oh, that's what I get. I almost get no dill on it. So I'm, I'd be interested to hear others in the chat, your thoughts on, um, thanks Bill. Um, you know, your thoughts on, you know, do you like dill? Do you not, you know, uh, in, in rye whiskeys or, or whatever it may be, but you know, some people love that. There's probably a lot of people who love pickles and don't mind don't mind a little dill. Or, <laughs> don't mind a little dill in the in the rye whiskey. So a little dill in it. Put yeah, so I mean, it's it is. It's just one of those things where it becomes you know, and I don't know if it becomes a little bit uh, psychological too when you're you know when you're tasting when you're tasting a rye whiskey or something that you start to think about tasting something and maybe you like psych yourself, you know into tasting things. I don't know. Do you ever run into it where you come into something with a, a notion that you're going to taste something and, you know, and, and find it? I mean, yes and no. I mean, at least on the channel, you know, I do, a I do a preponderance of my reviews blind, so I don't have any, you know, kind of predisposed things in my head that I'm doing. Yeah. Um, now that I started doing like the bottle openings on my channel though. Yeah. I definitely say I'd find things I don't expect in freshly opened bottles, but for the most part, no, not so much. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, you know, I try to, I try to not do it. And and that's one thing I would, I would say probably about all of us who do reviews and, and probably even in you when you're not doing things blind is to really let a, a whiskey kind of open up, you know, spend a little bit of time with it, you know, let it open up. Um, you know, it's kind of tough to judge a, a whiskey right off of a neck pour, you know, for the most part, you know, in terms of a true, true evaluation. So I, I don't know what are, what are your thoughts on, on, you know, opening a bottle, you know? 
No, I totally agree. And it's one of the reasons I kind of changed the formatting on my channel and I'm still in the middle of changing it. So now like what I do is I open the bottles on the channel because I do think there's some value in letting people know what that whiskey is going to taste like right when you open it. Because who's going to open a bottle and not drink some? <laughs> you know? yeah. So yeah, I think yeah. there's some value in letting you know what I find, you know, what's there, how, what I think about it when I know what it is. And I let the bottle sit. Um, I've been pouring my, my blind samples maybe like six weeks later. And so that way the bottles had a chance to open up, you know, yeah. it's not a fresh bottle and not freshly opened anymore. That way the, the whiskey has every opportunity to kind of show what it's got and not have yeah. those like neck pour notes on it. So yeah, I don't it's, know why I the format on the channel. Yeah. It's just one of those, it's just one of those things where, you know, I, I just, I think most whiskeys really benefit from even a little bit of time. I mean, I think the higher the proof, the longer it can be kind of opened up you know, open for, you know, before it really starts to, um, you know, kind of really, I don't want to say like change flavor to the point, but I've, I've had some bottles where I've, I've left them open for a couple of years and they got down to, you know, probably less than a, less than a third. And it just, it does not, it just was like almost flat for the most part. So. No, for sure. I mean, whiskey definitely changes as it oxidizes and yeah. I think there's a good, you know, there's some good tips and tricks you can take to kind of preserve your whiskey at the flavor profile that you like, you know, some people will, um, once the whiskey's tasting the way that they would think they want it to, they start putting like glass marbles in the bottle to keep it full. You know, that's a great tip. I, oh. I've never done that, but it's a really good yeah. idea. That's you know? interesting. I've never heard, never even heard that before. Yeah. You drop glass marbles in and that way it fills the airspace. You don't have an air gap, but you know, you're, you're preserving the whiskey at that, that oxidation level for the most part that you like. And it, okay. it you know, a lot of people try the gas and I hear mixed reviews on gassing stuff. Yeah. So I, I think I've, I've seen that too. And I, I mean, frankly, I'd probably just get too lazy to, to do it, you know, after each time, you know, so Mike, thanks. I appreciate that. Cheers to the bartenders. I, I would agree. There's a lot of people who are going to, uh, struggle here pretty, pretty soon. So thanks everybody. I really, really appreciate that. Um, all right. So what do you want? What are you on right now? What are you sipping on still? So I've just still been sipping on this little book. I think I might go run off. Grab a bottle of the, I feel like I gypped myself. That's what I wanted to drink. So okay. <laughs> actually I saw That's a good okay. question pop up in the chat though, from YW asking, what do we think of full proof versus barrel proof is barrel always better because no water is added. Um, I wouldn't say barrel proof is always better. I mean, full proof is just a little bit. I think full proof as a term is misleading. You know, it, people it think is. full proof is is the same as barrel proof or cast strength, and it isn't. You know, people use the term like the uh, the seventeen ninety two full proof, and that's not bottled at cast strength. No, you know, and people think that it is. So I I don't like the term full proof. Yeah. I think it's just there to kind of mislead people. But for me, I mean, I prefer my whiskey unadulterated by water. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it's bad. I mean, I think some of the amazing like uh knob creek single barrel for an example is never bottled at cast strength mm -hmm. and they're they're fan absolutely fantastic granted they're they're only putting like a teeny amount of water in because they're i think they're coming out of the barrels you know 125 or below and they're bottling at 120 so yeah it's not far off but still um amazing pours of whiskey so i don't think it really matters but i don't like the term foolproof yeah so. it is it is a little bit it is a little bit misleading you know i i would agree i think a lot of people probably think that's you know, some kind of barrel proof or whatever it may be. But I mean, there, there is definitely water, you know, added into that to proof it to, you know, to where they need it to be. So um, I mean, it, be if you're, if you're looking at it too, I mean, even just because they put barrel proof or cast strength on it too, it doesn't mean anything. There's no legally binding definition of either of those things. So, I mean, tech, I don't, I would think that they don't do this, but technically they could be adding water to those too. Yeah. Who knows? I think there was, I think there's actually a percentage. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if Bill from Modern Thirst or, or Forgate. Um, oh yeah, he might be still here. So if, um, Bill, maybe, you know, um, you know, just from your dealings with uh, the cast strength or barrel proof stuff, is, is there a percentage of water that can be added and still have the definition of cast strength or, or barrel proof? I, I thought there was a percentage, like you said, that you could actually add water and still consider it you know, barrel strength. So I just don't know if any of those things are actually like binding terms, like just like single barrel, like you could put 10 barrels together and call it a single barrel if you really wanted to. I mean, like there's yeah. no binding definition of that thing. It's, it's a misleading and it's, yeah. and it isn't right. And the whiskey community would get in an uproar, 
but I don't think that it's illegal. Yeah. Thanks, Trev. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. So yeah. And I would agree. I mean, I, I think it's one of those, those deals where there's a lot of things that are misleading. Like sometimes you'll still see like single barrel, small batch. Like to me, like, I mean, I don't even know how that's, how that's a, you know, even possible I, unless they're consider. I don't know. I just figured for batching something that you'd actually have to blend more than just one thing together, but uh, maybe, maybe I think not. The Knob so. Creek bottles say that, don't they? Don't the single barrel Knob Creek say small yeah. batch on them still? I think that's kind of where we all got. Um, I think that's where we all kind of got off on, on that whole deal. So um, hey, where did word bill say this? Um, not to my knowledge, but I'm not sure cast strength and barrel proof um, have even legally been defined or about. Yeah. You know, and I guess that's the thing, you know, there seems to be so many like loose ends on things where people just don't really understand like what it is like Matt says. Yeah. I mean, exactly. I mean, full proof can be proof down and it's, it's exactly what it is. I mean, it's, it's proof down to, to 125. So it's just, um, you know, things are a little bit misleading at times. That's, that's for sure. So. I really wish they would put definitions on some of this stuff because it'd be helpful for people. It'd be more transparent. Yeah. You know, people would, know. I mean, the, I think the biggest gripe people in the whiskey community have is like that these companies, at least some of them are not very transparent about what they do. Yeah. You know, they're not transparent about adding color or they're not transparent about age statements or they're not transparent about the proof of their whiskey. And it's just, I wish they would be, you know, make some of these terms legally binding. So yeah. that way, if you put it on the bottle, you know what it means and that's it. Yeah. And, and, and that's the, and that's the tough part. Cause you know, you see so many, you know, people talk about like labels and stuff. Like I know, I know Bill from four gate, they had an issue with like, uh, uh, you know, the naming part on a label that was probably something that was very kind of loosey goosey for the most part. I mean, it wasn't really something with their, their outer loop orbit. And, um, you know, so there's some things that like the TTB can, can really seem to be like very strict on. And then other things where, you know, they're, they just like, it's almost like they got submitted and nobody ever even looked at it. It's kind of rubber stamped it and sent it on to the next one. So. Yeah. Like take the crown Royal thing, you know, when they put out their, uh, bourbon mash, yeah. whiskey, you know, yeah. the TCB got all over them. They had to pull back all their whiskey. They start slapping yeah. stickers on the bottles and doing all kinds of stuff to, yeah. to change it. Cause they couldn't call it. They couldn't have the word bourbon on their yeah. label, you know? Yeah. And it's so another one of those things. Strange. Yeah. And it's another one of those things. Like, how did that ever get through? Like it should never have had bourbon on it. Cause a lot of people, like we all see it would just assume that was a bourbon mash, you know? And you know, so while well, I would love it if they were that so much, much of a stickler though for all the terms, you know, if they were that much of a, being a stickler for single barrel and for, you know, define small batch, you know, pick a number of barrels and define small batch. Yeah. Um, Cause 200 barrels is not a small batch, you know? So yeah. let's, let's cap it at, you know, 40 barrels is a small batch or whatever the number is, you know, define some of these terms so people know what they're getting. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, it's, it kind of seems like small batch, like to batch something, it always seems like you'd have to have at least two or more, you know, then maybe, you know, cause a small batch for a, a craft distillery could be, you know, five barrels where Buffalo trace, it could be 250 barrels, you know? Right. So, um, all right. So Matt says my road journey, uh, knob Creek label is just stating that it's a single barrel from the selection that would normally be blended into the knob Creek small batch collection. Okay. Cause I, and, and again, it's a little bit misleading. Cause I, if they put small batch collection and maybe did something like that, maybe they do. I don't know. Do you remember it saying small batch collection? I don't remember. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't remember. I never really cared all that much. I think we just pointed it out one time that it was odd that it said both. Yeah. Yeah, because I was just looking at this one. Just says the <laughs> this one says the original Knob Creek single barrel select Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey small batch. I I, I don't know. I, I guess I guess that's going to be one of those things where it just <laughs> remain, remains a mystery. I guess I I don't know. And I guess frankly, at the end of the day, I don't really care. I like it a lot, and it it is what it is. So, uh, what else? What else we have here? I'll be right back. I'm gonna go grab okay. a bottle. Good. I'll be interested to hear what you think of the batch three now, with, considering it, you thought it was batch two before. All right. What else we got? So uh, anybody else sipping? All right. So YW, 
drinking some of the Knob Creek 120, nine year and out, it's much worse than the 14 year picks. So here's my thing with the, um, the Knob Creek stuff. I still think it's a fantastic value and there's almost maybe not much better value in, in bourbon nowadays than some of these Knob Creeks. However, some of the ones that are now that are getting a little bit up there in age tend to be a little bit oaky. I don't mind an oakier bourbon, but it starts to get a little bit um, like there's this, this like tartness, there's this drying effect and it gets to be a little bit bitter and it's not something that for me, that's, that's very pleasing when that bitterness dominates, you know, in the knob Creek. So. All right. All right. That's the appropriate little book. All right. Christopher David, he's going to be drinking some of the uh, little book three along with you. So. All right, Christopher David, let's get it on. See what we think. Yeah, I, 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 really, I really like it. I mean, I it had some nice ages to it. I thought it was pretty, a, a really kind of nicely, you know, refined bourbon. I thought it had some some really good characteristics to it. I I really liked it. I thought it was worth the price. What did you pay for yours? Hundred bucks? No, I got them. I got a couple bottles. I think for like eighty. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you seem to have some. California seems to have some really good prices for uh, for uh, bourbons and stuff, don't they? You know, it depends, but yeah, we, the only problem with California is we get stuff late sometimes. Like stuff will come out, and I feel like we're the last ones to get it. And I don't know if that's a distance thing because we're just about as far as you can get from Kentucky in terms of yeah. the continental U.S. But yeah. yeah, I feel like sometimes it takes a long time to get stuff. But we, I generally have some stores that get some reasonable prices. Yeah, so Jeffrey was asking what what the um, what my favorite little book was. For me, one and three by far. Two, two was different. Two was one of those just interesting blends. Um, three for me, just as a bourbon like purist, I really just enjoyed the overall profile of, of it the most. Um, but I liked one because it was unique. It was different at the time, you know. So, but. I'd, I'd say th I'd say three for me was probably my favorite. Now the bottle you have, it's been opened already. Yeah, I opened this bottle. I did a review of me opening the bottle probably a couple months ago at this point, and now I'm like I said, this is the first time I've tasted it probably in maybe like I don't know six or eight weeks, and I think it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, it tastes way better now than it did initially. It's just way more robust and rich. When I tasted it at first, it just didn't feel like it had the complexity. But now it tastes fantastic. Yeah. Well, here, this is directed to you, John. Um, so from Bill from Modern Thirst, who also owns Fourgate, send him your email. He'll get you on the media sample list. Oh, I'll take you up on that, Bill. I think I sent you guys an email not too long ago. <laughs> so it went in the, it, it, I think that was when it went into the I don't give a shit bin probably, right? Screw this. Probably. <laughs> no, you no I had the opportunity. Who sent me a sample? So uh bobby adventures and whiskey had a sample of the four gate i think it was their batch one was it like the i think it was called like the calvin or the yeah, Kelvin. So that, was my, that was my 2019 whiskey of the year it was so so good i was super tempted to put it on my best whiskeys of the year list but i never had a bottle i had two pours of it i got one at at bobby's house and jason from the mash and drum we did a blind uh blind tasting together and he sent me a sample of it both times it was it was amazing. I really really enjoyed it. So I uh, I reached out to those guys. I just thought their whiskey was at least that batch was absolutely fantastic, and I've heard nothing but good things. Yeah, that so. was the um. So that was the one that was finished um in the um the um sherry and rum casks. So it was it was absolutely outstanding. The complexity and everything of it. It's like I'm afraid to open it because I know once it's gone, it's gone. There's like no. There's like no finding that one around anymore. It seems like so, I know, it. you know, and the complex. I mean, the complexity on it was fantastic. It was rich. It was deep. It just had so like a, such a great wide variety of yeah. notes. I was super impressed with it. It was just a great as a great blend. I mean, so far that's the thing. I mean, not to like, I don't want to get Bill's head too big or whatever, but uh, I mean they've done a they've done a fantastic job blending um, blending these things. So it was just ridiculous i know even talking to jason and everything too i mean we all we all really liked it you know a lot of us that are in the chat you know you know when you have a good whiskey that is just 
something you wish you could have like all the time. Like it just becomes a little bit more special than, than some of the other ones. So that's, that's what I would say, you know, I guess going back to the, the, you know, barrel strength or cast strength, whatever you want to call it, you just get this richness, that refined, like, you know, depth to a whiskey that we all really like, you know, that, that you just, for the most part, don't get in, in a lower proof whiskey. It's hard to duplicate that, you know? So it's, um, it's just crazy. So I think too, um, and I wanted to, I wanted to bring this up at some point during this live stream, but I think too, I think adding water really affects a whiskey to some extent and not just diluting it down. Like, I don't think, you know, I think a barrel proof whiskey that, that comes out of the barrel and no water is added at one, let's say 105 proof might taste better and more rich than a than a watered down whiskey at 115 proof mm -hmm. you know like and a good example and i brought it out um was you know like this guy and don't get me wrong this is not the best whiskey in the world from wild turkey but this is the first in their master's keep series it's a 17 year bottling and it was bottled at 43.4 percent alcohol mm -hmm. so it's like 86 proof like it's super low proof but it's cast strength and it's actually pretty rich and has a lot of depth to it for that proof yeah. so just a good example that not all barrel proof whiskeys mean that they're necessarily high proof whiskeys you know right right and that's and that's true you know they're like you know and here's another thing like a lot of these um you know when when some of these whiskeys go into the barrel at a lower barrel entry proof you know i think that's a huge factor as well so when you're when you're making or producing a good bourbon and you're not having to add much water to it, or you're just going in at a much, you know, lower barrel entry proof, you've got some more refineness to the, to the whiskey. It just always seems to be just a little bit, a little bit sharper. So yes, Jeffrey, I appreciate that. It's about the journey, not the destination, right? Happy to pitch in to help others journey during this time. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's a uh, very, very important. There's no, no doubt about that. And unfortunately, like we were talking before, there's going to be a lot of people who um, don't have jobs to to go back to. Um, so I think that's why John and I were talking before. If people do not stay at home and they continue to go out and do things and run the risk of of spreading this stuff around, we're we're not going to get back to what our what our normal normal is, if that makes any sense. So, uh, what else? Yeah, we on a soapbox. Yeah, we were talking about that before. It's like you know, if people would just stay home for a little bit, this whole thing would end really quickly. But yeah. You know, if I live in California, if any of you saw the pictures from the beaches and the uh, hiking trails and things like that in California this past weekend, after we've all had a stay at home order, everybody was out and about. These places were absolutely packed with people next to each other, close by, just jammed in places. And it's just like I know a lot of you know the majority of the population isn't going to be incredibly negatively affected by getting this virus, but there's a lot of people that will be, and yeah. this thing's just going to drag on and on, and people are going to lose their businesses and jobs. Yeah. And it's just, let's just get it over with. Stay yeah. home. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the sad impact is that there's a lot of these small businesses that can't afford to be closed a day, let alone a month, two, three months, or whatever it is. There are going to be a lot of people who don't have you know places to go back to, and when there's not businesses to go back to the unemployment goes up and we're in a bad situation. So anyway, so I'm going to finish up with, I'm going to go with, now this is my, I got a little bit of the stag. This is batch. I think this is batch 10. I, I wasn't fortunate enough to get any of the fancy uh, 12 and 13 that everybody. I didn't either. You're not the only one. I didn't even see it. Yeah. So <laughs> this is just back. This is batch 10, but I mean, I've always been other than their, their first couple of releases were, which was just kind of like gasoline. It was so bad. I mean, I still think they were trying to figure out what was going on with it. And then finally it got much better. So I, I think a lot of them have been, have been really, really good. So are we doing our last pour here? Yeah, this will be the last pour. We'll wrap her up. I know uh, um, Dan and Michael are going to be going on here in a few minutes from the bourbon junkie. So then they'll have, they'll have, <clears throat> They'll have a, a good right, time. I'm gonna over break there. out something. One of my favorite cast strength whiskeys is the uh let's break out the good stuff. Oh yeah, here we go. That's yeah, I mean you're talking about yeah, I mean that's uh I mean I guess I hate to say, I mean it's probably for me, I'll say now again, 
I say best whiskeys in the world. For me, again, that's excluding scotches. I'm not a huge scotch guy. So as far as bourbons and stuff go, that's a really hard, that's a really hard pour to beat right there. Yeah, it's just has so much depth and, and rich flavors yeah. and complexity. Oh, it is. It's just, I mean, it's really, it's really hard to, really hard to beat that. And again, that's one of those whiskeys when you taste it, you know, like immediately how good it is and just how different it is. You know, it's just, it, there's just something, um, something that's crazy. Yeah. Ted, I think it's, I think it's Dan and, and Michael Klein. I don't think Sean's back or they're, they're practicing their, I don't know. There's social distancing or something. I think maybe I thought it was, I think it is Dan and, and Michael tonight. I, I believe. So they're going to go head to head on something. I think they had a disagreement on something during their last, uh, their last live stream. So yeah, that William yeah. Lure Weller. It's so, I mean, it is just an, an elite. I'm or, savoring this bottle little by little. It's fantastic stuff. You know what, you know, it's, I I've always like with the, with a bottle like that, it's, it's sad when you open it, but as soon as you know, you open it, it only has value now to you and it's drinking value and it's the best value. When you get to drink that whiskey, it's, uh, it's so, it's so good. You know, on the couple occasions that I've scored like nicer bottles of whiskey in, in a shop locally, a couple of them, I had to tell them like, look, I'm not going to resell this thing, but I'm not paying your crazy prices. So Give me a good price. Yeah. I will open it in front of you. I'll give you a little if you want. Yeah. And let me be on my way. Like once I open it, it's worth nothing. Right. Like yeah. it is. But I mean, like for the most part, no one's going to buy that bottle off. Right. Of me. Right. So I'm just, I'm showing you that I want to drink this stuff. I'm not buying it to flip it. I want to drink this stuff because it's amazing whiskey and I don't want to pay yeah. $500 for it. Were you fortunate enough to get that at retail basically? This one I got for 110 Oh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I basically, that. yeah, that's, that's a hell of a deal. I mean, it's just, there's not a lot of, not a lot of times you see or have the ability to get a bottle like that at, at retail, you know? So, of course. you know, for me too, I'm really not willing to pay uh, these ridiculous prices for whiskeys. Yeah. I just, you know, having the channel and everything, I got to buy a lot of whiskey. Yep. And so, you know, if I buy, spend three or four or $500 on one bottle, that's legitimately like 10 reviews I could have done. So it just doesn't make sense for me. I'd love to review some of these harder to get bottles, but it's just like, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. You know, there's not like an infinite amount of money to spend on whiskey. Yeah. So yeah, no, that's, that's, that's exactly, that's exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing. I mean, a lot of us, most of us all, you know, rely on, you know, our, the patrons or whatever. I know. Do you have one yet? Do you have a Patreon account? No, no, I've never, I've never started a Patreon account. Like I've never done any of that. It's just been me and the few bucks YouTube pays me. So yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it. I mean, you, it is. I you mean, don't know how that goes. They, they like to throw you pennies, but yeah, it, it, it really is. Yeah. I mean, so this really, I mean, all of it is, I mean, fortunately it's a, it's a passion for all of us. So we enjoy doing it and it's something we can consume and talk about and enjoy with other people. And, you know, without, without these kind of platforms, you know, you and I couldn't do this right now, you know? So it, it makes it, it makes it all, uh, it makes it all, all worth. Yeah, exactly. Jason, wait, what? You can't just spend money <laughs> on whiskey. Yeah. Well, some of us, some of us can just spend money on whiskey. Not all of us can. Some of us that don't have wives and children. <laughs> exactly. And <laughs> exactly. So yeah, you can spend whatever the hell you want. You don't have, uh, you don't have anybody yet. I'll say telling you what you can spend on things. So, but it is, it's, it's fun. And I mean, it's, it's a passion. So, I mean, everything that we all do here and, you know, for everybody who is a, who is a patron of mine, I'll say who's in the chat, you know, thank you so much. I mean, it all, everything that we get goes right back into getting bottles or whatever it may be to do reviews of things along those lines. So none of us for the most part make so much money and every, and anybody who does, it really seems that it all goes back into the channel or meetups and things along those lines. So, I mean, everybody's, it's a great, it's a great community. So. No, for sure. And I, I've been wanting to start a Patreon. I mean, people have been asking me to start a Patreon account for a little bit and I do want to do it. I just want to wait till I feel like I can provide value. Like I don't want to have people like sending money to the channel if I don't feel like I could give them a little something special and extra. So I'm definitely, I'll work on that. And at some point I'll do it. But as of yet, no, I haven't started one. Really, the reason I started this was to, 
you know, meet extra people around the country and meet people yep. that had the same passion I do. And I mean, right now is a great example of that. Like I would not know you had I not started this yeah. channel, you know? So yep. just, just a cool, you know, a cool perk is being able to make friends with people all over the country and yeah. uh, be able to spend time on the internet and have yeah. a couple of drinks together. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is. I mean, it, 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 I mean, all of it helps. I mean, it's just, a, it's a great community. I mean, everybody's willing to help other people out all of that stuff. So, I mean, that's the, it's the best part of it. I mean, there's, you know, to share the stuff and do all that. I mean, it, it's, it's fun to be able to do, you know, all of these different things and talk to different people and meet different people and, and all of that. So, yeah, I mean, it really, it really is. So, um, I'm not trying to rub it in your guys' faces, but this William the Weller is just so damn good. I think, uh, I think everybody, uh, I think everybody already knows how good that is. Anybody who's had it realizes a, the difficulty in getting it and the, I mean, how fantastic of a whiskey it is. It's just, it's just one of those whiskeys that you never want to go away. So you milk it as long as you possibly can and enjoy it, you know, whenever you can. And, you know, I, I guess at the end of the day, there's always more, you know, there's the ability to get more, but not always that, you know what I mean? Yeah. They just, those aren't always, you know, everywhere to, to be. So, yeah. And out of the antique collection line, I think, I mean, it's definitely my favorite. And it yeah. doesn't seem to be the most, I mean, I feel like George T. Stag is more popular, but I think it's clearly like the, the most consistent and best. But don't get me wrong, I'm sure there's batches of Stag that have been better than some batches of William Lou Weller, but I think it's just the most consistently amazing whiskey. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, for me, I think it's probably the best one of, of all of them. Now, again, there's some of the others that are that kind of unicorn ish to the point where you never even see them, or there's just such a limited quantity of them, but um, you know, it's, it's crazy. So yeah. So like Travis said, it's amazing. The amount of people from the chat live come and become friends, you know, even outside of the chat. I mean, it is, I mean, whiskey is one of those things that brings an awful lot of people together and there's a lot of, you know, meetups that people are, are doing. And I know, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if Jason's still in here or not, but I know he was supposed to be doing one the end of April and with everything going on, I don't know if that's still going or not, but it is, it's just one of those things where it's a very social thing. It just lets you shoot the shit and talk about a million things. And before you know it, I mean, an hour has gone. It feels like we've been on here for, for 10 minutes, you know? No, absolutely. You know, I, I, I don't know you travel a decent amount. I travel quite a bit for work. And I've, I mean, I've met people that watch my channel all over the country. I've met other YouTubers across the country. We've made friendships. I've got, you know, I hang out with people when I go certain places all the time. I mean, it's, it's, it's cool, man. It's really yeah. awesome that it, it works out that way. And whiskey's such a cool thing to bring people together. Whiskey yeah. and the coronavirus bring people together. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, the latter is a bad one. But yeah, I always, I always had like an issue where I would say something to my wife and maybe, maybe you or other people can relate to it. But every time I tell her, I'm like, Oh, I was talking to somebody the other day in, in the chat or whatever. I'm going to meet them for, for a drink or whatever it is. And all of a sudden she thinks I'm somehow going to get like, you know, murdered and stuff in the back <laughs> of the trunk or whatever. I'm like, you just, you don't realize, I mean, these people are as passionate about like whiskey as, as I am. So, I mean, there's no, no murdering and stuffing in the back of a trunk. That's going to happen. We just want to, we just want to have good whiskey and shoot the shit with everybody. So, you know, so it's, it's, um, it's good. So, um, yeah, exactly, Ben. So, I mean, it is, I mean, these, I've seen people who will do these marathon lives and they're just three, four five hours and they'll just, they'll be over in, in no time. I mean, especially when we're doing like what we're doing and you can, I mean, one little question from somebody else can, you know, spawn a conversation that'll go on for another half hour or whatever it may be. So, yeah, look at guys like uh, Food Quig. You know, that he goes on marathon yeah. runs on the regular. He goes. He definitely goes on some some marathons. So it's it's a it's a crazy but a, a fantastic community, and it just everybody has a good time with it. And that's really what it's ultimately what it's all about is being able to do this kind of stuff. And you know, unfortunately, the reality right now is we all only have the ability to do this like this. So thank God that there's this, or we'd just be sitting at home drinking by ourselves, you know? So. Couldn't agree more. 
All right. So, well, we're a little bit, we're a little bit uh, over an hour. I know Dan and Michael are kind of going now. So um, now I guess before we go, do you want to let everybody know what, uh, what you've got going on with your channel? I know you've got some, uh, some head to heads and some wars and stuff going on right now. So yeah, yeah. I'm right in the middle of my distillery war shootout. I did a shootout between eight different Kentucky distilleries on kind of like their workhorse bourbon. So I'm in the middle of that. We're coming up on the tail end of it. If you haven't checked that out, definitely go check out my channel and check out my playlist. I started on that. Um, just doing head to head shootouts, a double elimination bracket on eight like iconic distilleries. You know, we got like Maker's Mark and we got Woodford. We've got Jim Beam. We got Wild Turkey, Four Roses, you know, all the big distilleries in Kentucky. Hopefully I've been represented and their, their whiskeys are going head to head in a tournament on my channel. So definitely go check that out. It's been a lot of fun so far and we're coming up on the tail end of it here. So, yeah, maybe uh, maybe what I'll do is um, before we get off, if if you don't mind helping me with this, um, I've got a list. Trev sent me the list of everybody right here. So um in in the order however i guess it doesn't matter to me it's all random anyway but let's see we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven let's let me make sure one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so there's eleven people who super chatted tonight do uh john do you mind doing a uh, a quick little uh um number between one and eleven and and see who uh see who gets it and whoever that is that'll be the winner for uh for the uh, two ounce sample of the 200th anniversary. Well, absolutely. Do you want me to pick it or you yeah, want me to no, do no, like no, a just, random just, number if, generator? If you can do like, if you have your phone and you can just do like a pick a number between one and 11 and uh, yeah, see, what, see what comes back and then I'll, I'll count the numbers and I'll tell uh, everybody who are the, uh, who the winner is right now so that everyone knows. And then I can, I can email and, and get information and stuff to them. So. All right, between one and eleven. Yeah, so eleven people, and you can see uh, those are all the names and everything there. So, uh, yeah. So just right, pick, uh, here's one and eleven. Eleven. Number eleven, Jeffrey Wack. Now he's number eleven in my in my thing here. So you you can see that um, he's number eleven on the the thing. So uh, so Jeff, send me a. Uh, Send me an email. Um, let's see. Let me put that back up here real quick. Um, where is it? So there it is. Just scrolling at the bottom. So and Trevor, thanks for uh, thanks for doing this for me. I I appreciate it. Trying to keep track of of all these things is is very difficult. So yeah. So Jeff, just send me uh, send me an email and uh, I'll uh, I'll get a a sample of the two hundredth anniversary um, Evan Williams off to you. So. All right. So uh, with that, so you uh, let everybody know about your channel and all that already, right? Yeah, we're good, man. All right. So, yeah, <laughs> thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank John. Thanks for joining me tonight. Uh, everybody, thanks for let me let me just kind of slow down here for a second. Thanks, everybody, for all of the super chats. Um, this money will 100 percent be donated to uh, a local bar and they can disperse it to the um, to the bartenders, however, however they see fit. Uh, that's going to be the the most important part. So, you know, anything that any of us can do that that are helping local people and doesn't have to be, you know, you guys to us. I mean, just local. If you can buy gift cards from local businesses or pick up food or whatever it may be, anything that you can do to to help these people um, right now will be will be greatly appreciated because if if we don't do these kinds of things right now for people, um, there's going to be a lot of businesses that that employees don't even have the ability to go back to. So, um, so thanks again, everybody, for for all the super chats and and all of that. Um, I'll get a uh, Jeff. I'll get a two ounce sample of this off to you as well. So, everybody, thanks for uh, for joining tonight, John. Thanks for joining tonight, and uh, of course. Like I say, it's about the journey and not the destination. Everybody be safe out there and uh, we'll see you next week. Cheers. See you. Stay at home.